nine have tried and 49 yes. have failed. It is not every day that we get Floyd Money Mayweather in Bristol. I kept hearing we're going to have you on the show. I never mm -hmm. thought it would be here. And you're promoting the super middleweight unification bout between WC champion Badu Jack and IBF champion James DeGaulle on Saturday yes. from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. That one is on Showtime. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's been a long time, bro. A long, long time. Yes, sir. I'm here. Let, let, look, first of all, let's <clears> get a couple <throat> things out of the way. Uh, it, it, you know, every time I think that you're retiring, I mean, it's official. Obviously, you're not fighting anymore. Mm -hmm. Then I'm at the Manny Pacquiao fight. Who sit behind me? It's Floyd Money Mayweather. <laughs> Conor McGregor opens his mouth. It's about Floyd Money Mayweather. TMZ got a video. It's Floyd Money Mayweather. For somebody that's retired, man, you, 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 you <laughs> haven't gone away. What's going on with I'm Floyd Money Mayweather? Staying relevant. I guess I'm just the biggest name in contact sports. I'm the biggest name in contact sports. I'm something to talk about. Are you going to fight again? As of right now, absolutely not. I, 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 I know you're tired. I'm very, very, very comfortable. Very comfortable. But if someone comes with a hundred million plus, I've read those quotes, if it's a nine-figure payday? Well, you know, I can, make a, I can get that anyway. You know that. Well, in fairness to him, in fairness to everybody, I've said this. Mm -hmm. When you and I spoke a few months ago, you also you said, listen, I'm retired. Yes. However... If I fight again, it won't ever be for less than nine figures. That's something that you said, so no, I make sure. That I feel my health is more important. I feel my health is very, very important. I've made, in a sport of boxing, just period, in an entertainment business, I made somewhere upwards of 800 million, and I was able to make smart investments. So, you know, um, but this time is very, very valuable and very important to my children. Mm -hmm. Health, well, you, you they say said, health as well. You said before the Pacquiao fight to a bunch of us in the in the in the mm -hmm. meeting that when you say um, the greatest, you know, the, the 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 PBE, the best ever, you're not even just talking about in the ring necessarily. Your quote was, "Someone else can have that." You mean the whole boxing game? Whoa! And I, I agree with that. You get out with your marbles, your money. You left a mark. The whole thing. Um, is that you said that that's the most important thing, but let's say a couple years go by and it just interests you again for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. People talk about a Triple G or a Pacquiao rematch or Terrence Crawford keeps doing what he's doing. How many more years do you think you could stay out and then still be able to jump back in the ring and do, to do your thing at the level you were doing it? I can't really say. I can't really say what I'm capable of doing two or three years from now. But as of right now, I'm very happy. Um, my life is going great. I have, a, I have a promotion company, and it's about giving back, and that's what I'm doing, giving back to the young fighters. How, but, do, how but, do young fighters emulate what you did in terms of not taking too much punishment, maximizing their paydays, and getting out on time? Well, it was always important to me. The less you get hit, the longer you last in the sport. And there's... Everyone can see, you know, you have so many legendary champions that took so much punishment and now they can barely walk, they can barely talk. And I didn't, I didn't ever want to, I didn't ever want to be put in that situation. I just wanted to be smart, you know, take my time and, and have, a, have a smart, surround myself with a smart team. And, I, and that's look, what I did. Look, damn it, you've been beyond smart. You made almost a billion dollars, okay? And, uh -huh. that, and that's being nice. And I'm not going to get all into your business, but let me get down to the nitty-gritty, <laughs> okay? Yes. You know, I remember when some dude, named, you know, with the glass jaw, Ricky Hat was talking smack, and you looked at your man Leonard Ellaby and said, make the damn fight, and then you yes. went and you took care of him. I did. So in other words, you are allergic to people chirping and talking smack. Now... We got a Manny Pacquiao yes. who clearly has been talking about how his shoulder somehow got hurt, and that's why he lost to you, okay? We got some dude in the UFC, I, I, Conor I, but, McGregor, you know, talking. I say, I Go ahead. Say, I want to say thank you. For so many years, you and Ben from Fight Hype are the only two that said it was going to be a blowout. Everyone else was Manny Pacquiao. They made commercials. They said I was a coward. They said I was a chicken. And then I made everybody eat their words. Every year, for years, they keep, they keep building these fighters, keep building these fighters, and all I do is just... But that's where them. I'm going. And that, that's where I'm going. Because, see, I'm trying to figure out where Floyd Money Mayweather is right now in this regard. Uh, like I said... I'm a hold promoter. On, hold on, hold on, I'm a promoter. I know you're a promoter, but, but stay with me, stay with me. I'm getting someplace. <laughs> okay. You got Pacquiao chirping. 
talking about he would be healthy this time around, mm -hmm. so he wouldn't mind a rematch. We got Conor McGregor, who's in the UFC, talking about he want to be a boxer. He wants a piece of you. I'm wondering, does that chirping affect you? Does it entice you to look at Lennon Ellaby, the ultimate business manager, and sit up there and go like this? Look, man, make the damn fight. I'm tired of this. Does that entice you to do that? We tried to make the Conor McGregor fight. Is that right? We tried to make I, the Conor McGregor fight. I didn't McGregor hear about fight. this. Please enlighten me. Well, we tried to make the Conor McGregor fight. Um, they know what my number is. Um, my number was a guaranteed 100 million. That was my, that was my number. Um, we're the A side, and I don't really know how much money he has made before. Con I don't know how much money Conor McGregor has made. I'm pretty sure he hasn't even made 10 million in an MMA bout. But we are willing to give him 15 million. And then we could talk about splitting the percentage, the, the back end percentage on pay-per-view. But of course, we're the A side. You know, how can a guy talk about 20 or 30 million if he's never even made eight or nine million? So let me get this straight. You're saying I'm that saying, you I'm wanted saying, 100 million, uh, no, I'm you saying offered right here, him 15 million. I'm saying right here on this show, Conor McGregor keep telling everybody he want to fight. Let's make it happen. Floyd, from a competitive point of view, in a boxing ring, that's not, that's a non-competitive fight. What? That's not my fault. No, no, Re no, no, remember, no. I paved the way. Before Conor McGregor, remember, Floyd Mayweather have been dominating since the 90s. I, I, I do I, recall, I, I, I was there for the Corrales listen, fight. I don't know, not just boxer, not, not just boxer, you can't tell me no other athlete that's been at the top right. for 20 years. Right, so, but let me add, what, I'm, what I'm asking is, from a competitive point of view, because a champion who's performed on the highest level for many years yes. must have competitive juices flowing the way Michael Jordan looks at LeBron James and thinks, I would defend him this way, I, I would play him that way. Do you look at any young fighters today and think, I know exactly how to beat that guy, I'd like to fight that guy? Not in a business sense, from just a purely athletic, competitive point of view. No, actually not. Actually, actually not, but I'm here to say on this first take, you guys keep hearing all these different rumors about these different fighters wanting to face Floyd Mayweather. Everybody keep talking about Conor McGregor. He's blowing smoke of everybody's ass. Can I say ass on him? No, no, no. Oh, go ahead. It's okay, it's okay, they'll I'm get sorry. over it. Go ahead, keep going. Apologize. Don't disrupt your flow, keep going. Okay, um, Dana White, the UFC, let's make it happen. Bring him over to the boxing world and I'll show him what it's like. Easy. So what, 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 what exactly does that mean? I'm you will show that, him what it's like. I want to know what you mean by that. What, what would I'm you saying, do? I've made 300 million in 30 minutes. So what I'm saying is this. If his height, whatever he's made, if he's made 8 million in about, I'm willing to give him 16 million. If he's made 5 million, I'm going to give him 10 million. If he's made 3 million, I, don't, I can only give you 6 million. I can ask for 100 million because I've made that on more than one occasion. But what would you do to Conor McGregor if he stepped inside a boxing ring against you? Oh, what's understood ain't got to be talked about. What's understood ain't got to be talked about. Can I ask one question real quick before yes. we move on? Because I've been yes. dying to know. Please tell me, switching gears, then you guys can take back over with all the box stuff. This soldier boy, Chris Brown, what is this beef? <laughs> what is the deal for it? Now I'm hearing it's in Abu Dhabi. Is this really happening, this fight? Um, my thing is this. You know hip-hop artists, R&B artists, uh -huh. talking about physically hurting each other in the streets. Okay. My thing is put down the guns and put on the gloves. And let's do this. Um, it could be a charity bout, and the money can go towards something positive. That's, you know, because I have Mayweather promotions, and we're about being positive. So is the fight going to happen? We're working on it. All right. It's a lot of work. You got to keep us posted. As crazy as that sounds, Max, Max, and I know, I mean, Max knowing the boxing, I mean, you do the aficionado. As crazy as that sounds, I mean, damn, the, the president is, is, a, is, is, is a Twitter troll for crying out loud. I mean, anything's possible well, in the United States of America. There's nothing wrong with people gloves to settle I mean, their differences. And, 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 and the I'm gloves sorry. instead of guns, I ain't, I don't have a problem with that. Put down the guns. No, put that's not a bad idea. Put down the guns. <laughs> and put on the gloves. And is it Abu right. Dhabi? Is that where you guys are looking at? No, Los Angeles okay. or Las Vegas, either okay. or. Floyd, from, from what I can gather from what you're saying, it mm -hmm. seems that you're 
your interest, what gets your juices going is the business of it all. Even in terms of the Conor McGregor, it's, it's about making the deal, the business deal that seems Absolutely. to be exciting you as opposed to, and you even mentioned this before the Pacquiao fight, you were tired of the athletic competitive side of it and you, and you, had, you were kind of done with boxing. Is that where you're, how you're still feeling? Sometimes after a, an absence, a fighter will start to itch because he's been doing it his whole life. I just want to say what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for, I'm looking to, fi I'm looking to find the next Floyd Mayweather because I've accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish. I broke every record in, in boxing. I'm not here to knock Rocky Marciano. I'm not here to knock Muhammad Ali or no legendary champion that paved the way for me to be where I'm at. But if I don't have that mentality, that I'm the best, I wouldn't have accomplished what I've accomplished in the sport of boxing. Having said that, here's where I'm at. The Floyd Mayweather that I know likes his money. That's why he's Money Mayweather. <laughs> and no matter how much money there has proven to be in promotion, yes. it seems to me as somebody who, who <laughs> lets the world know you own your own brand, so you get the promotional dollars plus the boxing dollars. But, but, but let's get this right. Huh? I'm the only... Athlete. That's right. I'm the only athlete that owns his own brand outright, and I'm the only athlete that owns all his fights. That's right. So okay. what I'm saying, so what I'm saying to you is, okay, there's nobody that you're representing that's going to generate the money as a fighter that you would generate. So being that combined with the fact that you love your money, here's my question. Well, you got to realize this. The thing is this: Conor McGregor has a boss. He has somebody he got to answer to. Pacquiao. I wasn't even going. Conor but no, no, but Pacquiao has a boss. He has somebody he has to answer to. I don't have no boss. Yeah, I, that's true. But they all. But the bosses even are going to capitulate to you because the money that they want to generate for the fighters, they know they can't generate the dollars for them going against somebody else. He's saying they can he used his going leverage against to make he himself did, did, a boss. Exactly. And now that he's the boss, that's where I'm going. I'm going here. You've got a situation where if Pacquiao continues to look relatively decent and swear and gets everybody to believe that he was truly injured when he fought you. That could potentially be <laughs> another $100 million fight. Would he get a rematch? He's or would you, what about Triple G? I don't want you against Triple G. You know, I got, listen, I believe in you. Was, you was Triple G the same guy that was struggling with a welterweight? Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 with Kel Brooks. Okay. Kel Brooks. But I'm just saying, someone, what he would argue is that he can't get good fights, so, with so he's getting hit on purpose. So with Pacquiao, he, is this the same guy when the fight was over? He was raising his hands like this. I said, that's the same guy. That's the same guy. Okay, that's I, the same I, guy. I, that's I, that. I, 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 I want to make guy. sure. I'm asking, no one really thinks Pacquiao won that fight. No, 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 no. I'm, just, I'm not saying they think he won the fight. I'm saying that because he's saying that yes. he wasn't 100%, he would be 100% for a rematch, which could, progener, could potentially generate the kind of dollars and, that and, you would want. So would that make you reconsider coming out of retirement? That's what I'm asking. Only thing that I'm probably, only thing I, that's pro I'm probably interested in it's probably the Conor McGregor fight. Really? Floyd, you I, mentioned... I, I, I'm a businessman, and it makes more business sense. Yeah. I easy, think easy work, 100 million, why not? I work... I believe in work, like, what me and Al Hammond talk about every day, you know? I believe in working smarter, not harder. Floyd, you mentioned looking for the next Floyd Mayweather. The problem with that is you not only need to find an all-time great fighter who doesn't take a lot of punishment and has the ability to win all of his fights, because a lot of your popularity was based on the fact, oh, no one can beat you. That, and, and you promoted that. But you also have to have someone with a personality who can yes. sell fights. So I see fighters like Terrence Crawford, like Lomachenko, really excellent fighters. Lomachenko. Or are they the next Mayweather? But can they also sell the fight? How say. do you find that? Terrence Crawford is a hell of a fighter. Yes, Lomachenko he is. Lomachenko is a hell of a fighter. These fighters are, I'm talking about, do I think they're going to be in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. But we're not talking about money, Mayweather. Let's talk about pretty boy Floyd. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're talking about Pretty Boy Floyd, we're talking about a 90% knockout ratio. We talk about fast hands, fast feet, combination. I mean, a complete fighter. But you remember, I was a professional as a teenager. So after, after the Sean Bay Mitchell fight, my body was completely broke down. Or after, probably after the Arturo Gatti fight, 
my body was completely broken. It was Shaba Mitchell because Arturo Gotti fight. He didn't touch you. I was there, Atlantic City. The man didn't touch you. I mean, don't even get me started. He didn't even touch you. He didn't touch you. We got to get a quick quick break in here. Broken down. What are you breaking down with bad boy? He didn't touch you. A little something, something. <laughs> Talk a little boxing, no. and we got to get your take. You're a big sports fan on some yes. some NBA, NFL stuff. We'll take the focus uh, okay. off you two into some other stuff. That's coming up. Stephen A says the Cowboys are an accident <laughs> waiting to happen. What does Floyd think? We'll ask him that and see if he agrees with Mr. Smith. Also coming up, James Harden did something last night that has been done only three times in NBA history. We'll tell you what is said, and Floyd will tell us if he is the NBA MVP. Stay here. It's first take. Look who's back with us now, Floyd Mayweather. Let's talk some football, shall we, guys? The Cowboys host the Red Hot Packers this Sunday in the divisional playoff. Floyd, will the accident waiting to happen be this weekend for those Dallas Cowboys? Well, I choose Prescott over Romo. Okay. He's been looking tremendous this year. He's playing. Youth is on his side. <laughs> Strong legs, he's fast, he's accurate. I choose Prescott, but it's dangerous with playing against Aaron Rodgers. He can upset you. Even with Jordy Nelson injured? Jordy Nelson got two cracked ribs for Green Bay in that game against the Giants. Well, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. With Jordy Nelson out, it's going to be tough because Jordy Nelson is Aaron Rodgers' go-to guy. What about the fact that the way the Cowboys block for the run gave Green Bay a lot of problems <clears throat> at Green Bay earlier in the season. Does that happen again, or is Green Bay a new team in, over the last, since Aaron Rodgers said we're going to run the table? Anything can happen with Aaron Rodgers. You can't count him out, because he has ex more experience than Prescott does, you know, at that level. How do you feel about the fact that the Dallas Cowboys have two rookies leading the way. Do you think that ultimately is going to catch up with them, or are you banking on them running the table and possibly going to the Super Bowl, if not flat out winning it? If they do get to the Super Bowl, I think it's going to be against the Patriots. And when they play Brady, it's going to be tough. Their, their defense is predicated a lot. Speaking of defense wins championships, we know all about that. Their defense is predicated on their ball control offense, right? They're, they're able to yes. control the clock. But is their defense good enough to even get by the Packers if Rodgers gets hot, let alone run the table? With Jordy Nelson out, I didn't know Jordy Nelson was out. Do I think they're going to win? Absolutely. But if Jordy Nelson was in... You know, Aaron Rodgers' chances is a lot better. As far as defense, um, they'd have to play either the Falcons or the Seahawks after that. Ah oh man, Seattle looked looked very good last week. Well, who's your favorite team? <laughs> Let me check your objectivity in well, Orleans. Who's live, your favorite team? I live in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and we don't have a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, Do you want one? The sports book. It's my favorite team. I got you. Okay. I feel you. I believe you Do you want you a that. team, though? Do you want a team in Vegas? No. No, not you don't? Why not. So you're not going to be Raiders? happy about Why the Raiders coming to Vegas? I mean, it's going it's to it's mess up the sports betting. Why? Uh, it's it's going to be tough. I think so. It's going to be very, very tough. Mm. Why? Because they'll be so uh, vigilant about gambling because the team is there? I think so. It's going to be real, real dangerous with the gambling. It's going to be very, very dangerous. Let's transition to the NBA because, you know, <laughs> first of all, first of all, it's a lot of stuff going on. Max and I are debating about who the MVP, his, his, his attitude is LeBron James is the MVP every day, all day. But for the purposes of a debate thus far this season, it's between Russell Westbrook and James Harden. I'm going with James Harden right now as league MVP. You mentioned your boy Isaiah Thomas for the Boston Celtics. Talk to me. Well, Isaiah Thomas is the only guy that's 5'9 in the NBA and is averaging 28 points in history. We don't know no guy that's 5'9 and averaging 28 points. But it's not pound for pound in basketball. He's still got to match up against bigger guys. They're number three right now in the East. If he get one more piece, 
they're going to be a tough team to beat. So as of right now, I like LeBron as the MVP every year, the same way I would call you pound for pound every year, even if someone you, else you had like, a more active year. Okay, you like LeBron because LeBron knows, knows how to stack his team. But then when Durant did it, they gave, him, they gave Durant a bunch of slack. Well, they did he it with LeBron at first. Slack? I feel like this. I like, I like how it was in the old day, in the old days. Bird had his team, Magic had his team, and you played with the team that you had. Like Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant never left the Lakers. He played with the team that he had. But he asked, but, so he asked for a trade. But, but I don't like the simple fact is when LeBron James wanted to become a free agent, how, how they tore his posters down, they burnt his jersey, they burnt his jersey, and then they, then they love him when he come back. That's not cool. So okay, hold I on. Bring up, I bring up LeBron because that's my choice for MVP every year. But right now, everyone's talking about either Westbrook, who I picked preseason, I figured he'd have the numbers, or Harden. Between Westbrook and Harden, who's having the better year right now? I like James Harden. Because? I go by your team winning. Not just what you're doing, your team also have, have to win. The record backs me, it up. Hold on, let me go back to something here. Because, see, I don't like what you... I, I need clarification. I'm going to give you clarification. Let's go. We got LeBron James going to Miami. I got no issues with that whatsoever. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with going to South Beach. Ain't nothing wrong with it at all, okay? Not to mention the fact that, again, Miami wasn't much before he arrived with Chris Bosh to join Dwayne Wade. In the case of Kevin Durant... That's well, three franchise players. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute, though. I said they weren't much until they arrived together. My point is, Kevin Durant... Went to a 73 and 19 all time single season, regular season record, who were the reigning defending champions, who he was up 3 1 on, lost that series, and three weeks to a month later, he ends up with them. You don't see the difference in that? He's a free agent. No, I understand that. I understand that. When you're free, you're able to go where you want to go. No, no, I'm we not. We have to stop being so tough on these athletes and let these athletes go where they want to go. But Floyd, okay, I get that, and I'm, I'm for Durant joining the Warriors. I'm if they would have won the chip, I would have been Warriors. like, time out. But they didn't. He joined the Warriors, fine. Why is it okay for Magic just to have Kareem, you know, one of the greatest who ever lived, and just to have Worthy, or Bird to have Mikhail and Parrish, but if LeBron looks around and goes, okay, my GM can't put this together for me, I would think that you would appreciate him saying, then I'm going to put it together for me. You can win. Me, myself, I think any athlete, I'm saying, me, myself, I could put you in my corner. I could put you in my corner. I could remove my father. Not saying that my father is not a good trainer. But once you get to a certain level, you already, you already know what to do anyway. With that being said, is this. LeBron James should know how to win with who, who's ever, whoever he's with, if he's that great. But he did. He but got he the Cavs, but I'm he got not the Cavs to the finals without a good team. And what happened? Oh, well, he lost, of course, because no, 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 he played no, no, no. a good team. He didn't, he didn't get, he lost. Got swept. Got, there's, yeah, there's got a smoked, difference. yeah. I, I mean, he could have won at least one game. But LeBron James is one of the best players to ever play Boy, what about Boy, what about the year, two years ago, when he got to the finals and Kyrie goes down and he doesn't have Kevin Love and he takes the Warriors six games by himself? I mean, it's impossible to overcome other very talented teams that are stacked. Doesn't everyone need help? LeBron James is an unbelievable player. We all know that. But when it's crunch time, he need to take over. Time out. I'm not letting either of y'all get away with this conversation. Let me get back to Kevin Durant because it's a very important point that I want to point piggyback off of. Kevin Durant Listen, is the say, best scorer. Yes, yeah, he's top two all world. He's top two okay, in the I world. To make he's sure. top two in the world. He may not, not be the best I, shooter. No, no, I'm not questioning his. He's a superstar. Is Curry the best shooter? Listen, listen. But here's my issue. It's because he's a superstar. Mm -hmm and chose to go to a, a, a team already loaded with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, okay? Because he chose that route. The Floyd Money Mayweather that I know, if there was a way to compare that to a boxer piggybacking off of somebody else's greatness, you'd lose your mind. You'd say, look at what I have to go through. Look at what I went through to get to where I'm at. McGregor, they didn't do it this way. They do way. that every day. I'm just saying, and you, and you call them out on it, but somehow, some way, you're telling <laughs> us to be like. That is true. You're mad. You kind of <laughs> sound a little <laughs> salty <laughs> yeah, about yeah, LeBron, yeah. but then giving Kevin Durant a pass. I'm, no, I'm not giving any of them a pass. I'm saying if you have to be the same way with both of them.
You can't say I agree. It's, it's okay for LeBron, but it's not okay for Durant. Yeah, Stephen A. Yeah, I, I, I've been no, trying no, to no, tell no, you that I for months. So if it's okay for, if it's this, okay this, for this LeBron... Basketball. You lucky I allow yeah, you to hold, talk. Get hold on, on this, Molly. Hold, hold on. The way you get with yeah. Harvey, please. If, if it's okay for LeBron to do it, it's okay for Durant to do it. I'm saying to you, how do y'all sit there and look at them as the same situation? Knowing basketball the way that y'all do. Y'all don't see the difference between Kevin Durant going to the Warriors and LeBron joining the Miami Heat? You don't see any difference in that? Okay. LeBron James has Kevin Love, a franchise player. Now, and, I ain't talking about Cleveland. That's different. And, and oh, I was going back to Cleveland with Kyrie and Kevin Love. Coming Miami. That's totally different. I'm talking about the Miami. Well, he, talking, he, still had franchise, he still had franchise players. Was, was Chris Bosh a franchise player? Really? That's Toronto, where we're going? Absolutely. I, I respect Toronto Chris went to the playoffs. He, he averaged yes. hold on, hold on. Chris Bosh yes. averaged 20 and 10, yes. and he yes. took Toronto yes. to the playoffs. Think, I'm not trying yes. to be disrespectful to a good dude in Chris Bosh who can play, <laughs> but we're going to act like Chris Bosh the second coming? He really? wasn't, a, he wasn't a top five That's player, player Chris, Chris, but he was hold top hold 15. Hold on, let me ask you this. Is Chris Bosh, what's Chris Bosh the equivalent of Clay Thompson or Steph Curry? Is that what y'all saying? Clay Thompson, yes. You got no, no, no. Clay Thompson won the best player in the game. I'm saying, so Chris Bosh at the time. to be crazy. Bosch is the Why? same as Clay Listen, Thompson? Back then, yes. I have to ask you a question. Go ahead. Why in the NBA they do not give Clay Thompson his just Thank you, right. That, that's what I'm saying. He's I'm one saying, of the best players in the NBA. Yeah, the best so is Chris Bosch back then. Time. Not yeah. only is Clay Thompson, one of the, Clay Thompson one of the best players, Clay Thompson is one of the top shooters we've ever seen. Hold on. Yes. Well, you gonna say that I just Chris want Bosch? everyone to see this. Chris Bosch? Chris Bosch, when LeBron went to Miami, was he or was he not one of the He's best players in the NBA? He's an all-star. He's one, yes. Yeah, yeah. He as Clay time Thompson time is now. Time he was an all-star. So is Clay. But what I'm saying is... He's not being mentioned for MVP. I'm not talking about stature in terms of all-star, whatever. I'm talking about knowing the game of basketball and understanding how prolific they are. You trying to tell me that Chris Bosh had the same impact as Clay Thompson? Yes. You got to be crazy. Well, Unbelievable. Chris Bosh, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. Chris Bosh was the best player on a team by far who went used to go to the playoffs and Chris, he used to average 20 and 10 and play Chris defense. Chris Bosh was a dude that could put up numbers he can play. But Clay Thompson is one of the prolific shooters this game has ever seen. And Kevin yes. Durant is joining him and Steph Curry and you compare that to LeBron joining Bosh. You want to go down the list? I'll name a bunch of players oh, better than Clay Lord. Thompson right go now. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to use up all the time. I'll get back to you. I got plenty of time to deal with you. Go ahead, man. Y'all going to debate every day about yeah, who's the gonna... best player. There's no debate. Kevin Durant is top two. LeBron is number one. Everybody else falls in line. I'm simply saying to be a superstar of that caliber, mm -hmm. but to join a team with that arsenal who just bounced you out a month earlier. I can't believe Floyd Money Mayweather don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Man, I like, I like all players. All right. I like, but we also, we have to talk about, well, yeah, let's talk about boxing, man. That's right. <laughs> I got I got a, uh, Mayweather Promotions. Okay. We have a huge fight this weekend. Showtime, my champion, WBC champion, and we also have the IBF champion. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be an explosion this weekend. This is a fight that you can't. I got a fight. I got. I got. I'm glad you want to switch back to boxing because I wanted to go there anyway. Because I'm disgusted with your response about Kevin Durant. I got. I got. I'll deal with that anyway. I got. I watch. Badu I, Jack I watch Badu. versus James DeGale. I like him. A unification bout, and I also have the IBF 130 pound fight on the undercard. How committed is Floyd Money Mayweather to competing against the Bob Arums of the world and others as a promoter? I mean, is this something? I know you take your business seriously because you, you know want to make really money. You know what I really believe in? Wait, go, go ahead. I got into this. I became a promoter in the sport of boxing not to make money off of fighters, for the fighters to get the lion's share and to help fighters because I know how fighters feel because I was in the position that they're in now. Whereas other promoters, and I'm not saying Bob Arum or Don King, but most people that get in the sport of boxing, promoters, get in, get in this to make money. I'm going to make money. Of course, I want to make money. But I'm in this to help fighters. I'm how, in this to really help fighters. How much was Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy the model for that, the top draw in the game, using his leverage with TV networks to get dates from networks so that he could build his promotional company, and, then he's, and he's still around doing it? Um, I'm being honest. I mean... Golden Boy, and I don't not Golden Boy. They're holding on now because of Canelo. But what we believe in, what we really believe in, we believe in loyalty. 
Showtime took Canelo from the beginning and helped him get to a certain level, and then De La Hoy took him over to HBO. I don't have anything against it, but I'm talking about me as a promoter. I'm loyal. I stayed with HBO until my contract was up. I went to them first and said, this is the deal I want. On more than one occasion, four or five times, they said, Floyd, we can't do the deal that you want. So I went, that's when I went on to Showtime and they got the deal done. You talked about loyalty amongst boxers. I don't know all the details, so I'm not casting any aspersions on anybody. Yes. But I remember that sort of beef, whatever it was, between you and Adrian Broner. And the one thing that resonated with me is that you always came across as somebody that tried to do good things for him. And then somehow, some way, things fell apart. I'm not asking you about you and Adrian Broner, per se. But what I'm saying is, is as a promoter now, mm -hmm. when you speak about loyalty, is that really a reasonable expectation, considering how temperamental boxers can be? Even though we have a lot of fighters that's disloyal, we have promoters that's disloyal, I'm trying to make the sport better. I'm being honest, as far as being a lot more positive. The Floyd Mayweather that I was when I was 19, 21, 25, 30, 35, I'm totally different now. Next month, I'll be 40. So I look at, I look at sports in a boxing game totally different. I'm here to help fighters. Mayweather Promotions, is here to help fighters grow. Let me ask you this. How do you do both? Because it seems to me boxing is a lot of exploitation of fighters, yes. which you spoke about for many years. Yes. And one of the things that you and Al Heyman did was flip that around at times and sometimes exploited the networks and the fans. It, you know, like, it, it, you, sw you flipped the script, as they say, the paradigm. What do you mean? How, how do you, well, for example, it's if you have a, a fight where guys are landing a lot of punches, that's not good for the fighter's health, right? But it, you can sell that to the fans. Mm -hmm. So as a promoter, how do you do both? How do you bring excitement, pump up the game, and also protect fighters from being hurt because it's a hurt business? In the sport of boxing, my mentality is this. If you're going to take a lot of punishment, try to get much as you can possibly get financially for taking the punishment. So it's not about necessarily the style of the fight, it's about compensating the fighters as well as possible for the risk. I see, that's why I said it's always about, it's not about the promoter winning, it's about the fighter winning, it's about the fighter get, getting the lion's share. And how, are you, how do you make money as a promoter if of that's course, the case? Of course, I have to make money because I'm taking all the risk. And I feel like I paved the way, you know, I gave this sport my whole life, blood, sweat and tears, and you give these, fi these fighters are very unappreciative. Nowadays, very unappreciative. So is that your way of saying that you're going to make sure you get yours? What you're not going to do is take a, ch a lump sum to the degree that other promoters in the past I'm may have taken. I'm not going to do that. That's what you're saying. I'm not going to do that. What goes on, what fans and people don't know, what goes on in the sport of boxing. If, if, a, bout, if a promoter gets $3 million for a bout, a promoter may give one fighter 700000 give another fighter 200,000, that's 900,000, and then pay the, under, the whole undercard 100,000. He pockets 2 million, he takes the gate, he takes all, I mean, merchandise, he takes the money for the merchandise, I mean, he takes the live gate, and he takes all the um, sponsorship. Foreign rights. The foreign rights and the sponsorship money. We believe in treating fighters fair. They can say whatever they want to about Floyd Mayweather. I've been fair in the sport of boxing, and I'm truly blessed to be where I'm at because I've been fair. And we'll get to see your fighter Saturday night, Barclays Center on Showtime. Oh, man. Badu Jack, James DeGale, unification bout, super middleweight bout. I mean, Showtime, you guys cannot miss this bout. Floyd, we appreciate you. Thank you for Thank coming you. to Bristol. Thank I didn't know we'd have you here. Coming up appreciate next, it. Matt Ryan has been anything but mad.